Hey y'all, welcome back to Chasing Dreams Homestead. So this next video that we are going to upload is by our very dear friend Carletta. She is an avid naturalist. She is very experienced in homeopathy and natural uh, cures and medicinals. And she gave a class at our spring homesteading meet and greet on um, wild crafting and medicinals. So we're going to go ahead and share that class with y'all now. We do apologize for the road noise and you can hear a lot of banging in the background like clinking. That was the blacksmith that was at the meet and greet as well. Um, for our fall meet and greet, we will, which will be November 4th, uh, we will have all of the classes indoors hopefully so we won't have to compete with any background noises. But check out Carletta's demonstration and I hope you enjoy. As opposed to, uh, you know, Eastern where you do Chinese medicine and things like that for, um, I don't know, 20 years to do that. You have to travel everywhere. So I've been from Belize and Brazil to Austin and Colorado and Montana. So uh, just everywhere in between. So that's how I've learned and been able to study with good teachers. Um, today, I guess, since we only have 30 minutes, uh, what I want to do is kind of share with you about plants in general, how you might want to start if you are not um, doing that now, and maybe answer some questions, some preparations, things like that. Whenever we have our fall meet, I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, we can actually have some demonstrations, maybe do some preparations and bring some specific plants in. Um, let me start by telling you what I have over here. So, we're all energy, you know that. If you don't know that, well, that's okay. You can look it up on Google. Um, we're all energy, as are any living thing. Plants, trees, flowers, grass, animals. And because we all carry that energy, there's an electrical uh, charge that goes between all of us and also between plants. What I have here is a Medi device that I've hooked up to a, a sound app. And I have alligator clips here. The reason I'm doing this is to show you the energy of this plant. I'm not doing this. The phone is not doing this. You all can hold the clips also. This is coming from this plant. So it's taking that resonant energy and turning it into music. And that's to prove to everybody that plants are alive. They are living. They are. They do have more than just medicinal properties. They're energy like we are. What there's energy connected to it so anytime you hi, see she it reacts different even when you touch it so anytime you work with the plant um i'm not saying you have to sit and talk to it or anything but what you do need to acknowledge oh you brought another one thank you sweet um, she brought even another plant that we can hook up um, what we have to acknowledge is that they are they do carry energy so that energy is then what we harness and put into when we're making salves tinctures, teas, things that we want to heal us. So um, some people even like to make a preparation and they'll say a little prayer or they will have a thank you to the earth or whatever it is that you feel is uh, gracious towards uh, whatever your belief is and acknowledge the fact that these can also help you and heal. Now plants, unlike allopathic medicine, um, they work with your body, in your body. They don't do any, there's no force that's going on. So if you have um, a malady that's going to require, let's say yarrow, I love yarrow. Does that grow on everybody's property? I would assume it does, most people. Um, so when you're harvesting the yarrow, if I have even a sign of a any bacterial infection, let's say you have, uh, I don't know, a sinus infection coming up, a lot of people get that. I will have already made a yarrow tincture, and I take that immediately. 
and it might take that, you know, every couple hours till I feel it dissipate. So there are circumstances, my point, where a plant can help you quickly. But if you have a systemic, you have inflammation, you have gut issues, you have things like that that really need to be addressed on, uh, on a smaller level, so you need to get your gut in order, then yes, plants are also gonna help us, but don't expect an immediate uh, result. Because plants work with our body. They don't work against and they don't work to just stop the, uh, you know, the whatever the symptom is. Um, and I used yarrow because a lot of people have it growing. Um, there are beautiful plants everywhere that grow probably in everybody's yard. You have singing nettle, you have uh, plantain, you have dandelions, everything that, you know, you could potentially work with. Dandelions, you know, the roots and the leaves are really great uh, to move the, the liver, to help with the liver a lot. So there's a lot of simple ones. Um, since we have 30 minutes, I'm gonna just, the key thing is to know, um, what, what plant you're picking. So something like plantain, dandelions, you're just starting out, maybe even skinny nettle, um, are easy to work with. So the most important thing to know is that there are lookalikes. So make sure you know your plant. Once you have that confirmed, then decide how you would want to use it. Some of the more simple ways to use a plant would be to make uh, a salve, or let's start out at the beginning, to make a tea. talking to us, uh, getting kind of loud, is to make it perhaps a tea. So in, the, in that instance, you take a fresh plant, you would add water, and you let it steep for a bit and you make a tea. You can do it longer and it becomes an infusion, but we're just going to talk about tea right now. Or something. Um, and you can sip that and drink that throughout the day, uh, just as refreshing and also to be almost like a tonic. Um, so that's a simple way to start. But what I'm curious, since we don't have a lot of time, is for people to share. And let's talk about, like, has anyone here used something out of their yard? Have you made a tea? Uh, do you have a question about it? Um, so somebody start telling me something. Talk to me about something. I made dandelion jelly. You made dandelion jelly. And, uh, the purple, uh, purple. Oh, the purple violet. Okay. So, see, and we still have, I think because we have to acknowledge that the plants do carry their own energy medicinally, um, then I have to say that her jelly would have a lot more, uh, you know, it would be more fortifying to our system than would buy something that's organic even off the jelly. Um, but has anybody made a tea or a salve or a tincture? Yeah. You use molly. Great. Another one that everybody has. Have everybody used mullen? I, I smoke that one too. You smoke, yeah, you can yeah. smoke mullen also um, for, uh, issues with you know what do you do when you have a cough or you have congestion yeah, bronchitis, yeah. congestion right um any how do you prepare your mullet I do tea. you do a tea just a straight with the fresh mullet yeah. yeah i try to like have it year round uh -huh. and so the teas are quite simple what other has anyone made a tincture yeah I've, well i've done uh saps with the coffee and the champagne and then i can do a little bit of like essential oils coffee stinks and so just coconut so did everybody here? Things. She's talking about making a salve. So she used comfrey, which is exactly what these folks over here were asking and talking about. So the comfrey uh, is not something you would ingest. No, and we need to know that. Um, it's something that you would uh, prefer to make uh, a, make a salve. Right. Some of my friends really like really score bias as, as far as like bug bites and big scrapes. And right. Stuff like that. And an easier way, you know, if you want to start, if you want to use dried material um, and just infuse it in oil, use something uh, simple like an olive oil. And when you do that, then you'll have a simple, um, you know, something to use on if it's a sting or a bite or different things like that. Make a vinegar, um, another simple way to keep them. If you're using fresh plant material, a tincture, has anybody made a tincture? You made tincture? Yeah. I did valerian. Although I let it sit way too long. Uh -huh. And I don't know that I ever actually used it. I tried. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, you have to and try what you make. That's making burdock. Burdock. Yes. And so it's, it's curing. It's, it's got a couple of. So you, so you dug the burdock. Yeah. Okay, so. Well, no, actually, I've locked the uh, root for Okay. Some I was going to say, I've dug burdock. 
uh, and I'm telling you, dig to China to get to Maria. Yeah. So when I was up in the uh, Appalachian Mountains, the United Plant State was there. I did it all day long. I was just in the mood, and so you know, you just, you just keep on digging and it's very medicinal. You can also, um, and I'm just giving you simple ways. You can use the plants as long as you've identified and know what they are in your soups and your stews. It's not just tea. You know, you can put burdock root, which I, I do that, and you can put that in the soup, and it's just, you know, while you're cooking it, then the medicinal properties, you know, are then uh, brought forth. So whether you're using a root, an aerial part, whether it's a flower, a uh, flowering part, or a leaf, uh, you might want to start just using the leaves and the flowers, because if you get into the roots and the other parts, they need to be processed a little bit differently, um, either in a decoction where you're, you know, boiling it, or you need to have a process to extract those medicinal values. So there are different parts of the plant that will um, bring you the medicine in different ways. So not everything you can just throw it in water and think, oh, well, that root's going to be a really medicinal tea. Yeah, it would be better than drinking regular water, but it will not give you, uh, you know, the, what you expect out of the plant, which you know, you know, the chemicals, constituents that help whatever the malady is. So um, is there, is anybody wildcrafted or, you know, actually went out to your yard and other than the plantain, do you go out there like, when I look at my yard, there's a section of it that I do not ever mow and it's where we have a raised bed garden and I say, that's my salad. So, you know, you go out there and you pick those fresh plants. So like with anything, even if you're growing, you know, and you have your own uh, yard where you're growing fruits and vegetables and things like that, you know, you you get those immediately out of the ground and, and you eat them, they have a different energy than they would if they're sitting, they're going to the grocery store, they're riding in a truck, you know, and they lose that. So it's the same thing with your plants. So if you can effectively identify, very important, um, and use the plants immediately, that's wonderful. Or if you can then dry them, you know, and leave them for your storage. I always like to use glass. I know you can't use plastic and other things. Um, I think it's very important to use glass because it's more of a natural material and because, um, you know, you don't get any residue from anything else. Uh, any, any tinctures anyone make other than you made the passion flower? Wild lettuce. You did wild lettuce? Yeah. It's really gross. <laughs> I've heard that. Well. It tastes very bad. Yeah. But it works. Right, right. So I think we most tinctures taste pretty yeah. bad though, but they work. Well, and you can, did you use glycerin or did you use alcohol? Um, I actually, just, like I said, I boiled it and strained it. Uh-huh. And so you only made more like a decoction or, yes. a, or an infusion. Yeah. So the infusion is the tea where you would let sit overnight or however long, and then usually it's 24 to 48 hours. And then a decoction would be for like the roots and the different parts that you have to boil and things like that. So yeah, so the tincture is a little bit different um, in that... A lot of people say use Everclear with everything. I don't agree with that. Um, depending on the how hardy the plant is, you can use, um, you know, vodka. Most people go to that. I usually try to use an organic uh, potato vodka as possible. Um, you can use brandy. And some you can use wine. You know, there's a really you can use wine that's already made, maybe a not expensive wine. Put your uh, plants in there. Uh, maybe even use a little local honey after you've let them steep for a while, and that's another way to use the plant. Um, and, and two, and not over harvesting. So, you know, if you have a planted area where you yourself have put, you know, the plants and put them purposely in a container, then you usually don't over harvest because you think, I want to keep on going. So another thing we need to remember is that whenever we are out wild crafting, if it is a smaller area, make sure to leave enough so that, you know, we can go back to that every year and not just, because sometimes even, well, especially now, I see that there's a lot of, Karen and I were talking about that. She's a friend of mine. She's also in her bowl. It's probably going to teach next year. But we were talking about, you know, over-harvesting in that. Um, so we need to be mindful of that. Uh, just like yeah, you would anything if you had grown it yourself. So you need to be happy about making that thing come back. So are there any particular questions? Uh, yeah, so personally, yeah, I don't like to uh, scald them to death. So I'll let it um, come to right right under a boil. And if I have boiled it, I'll let my tea kettle set 
you know, off to the side and just let it calm down a bit because I don't want to just, uh, you know, yeah, I don't want to overdo it on the sand and, and kill out all you know, any of the good volunteer oils by making the, the water too hot. So that's actually a really great question because I think that's very important. You know, and then when you let it steep, of course it's hot enough, hopefully, that then when you let it steep for five or ten minutes, then you have, um, you know, you still have a, a nice warm tea. So, yeah. What else do we have? I know you have other questions. Um, I've got, uh, I've dried it, but I haven't done anything specifically with it, because I didn't know the best way to prepare it. Um, both reishi and turkey tail. Yeah, uh, well, and she's asking about reishi and turkey tail, which are mushrooms, which grow on, um, you know, the rotted wood. I'm sure you all have seen it or you've picked it. So when when you're preparing, which unlike, well, it could be like some of the roots, but when preparing a reishi or turkey tail, usually there's a process that you have to go through where you're boiling and straining several times. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's the way you break down that. So I would... Uh, the turkey tail I have actually made and, and put it through the strainer twice. Um, yeah, so that's kind of a different subject than the plants, but uh, on the reishi also. I've also taken the reishi and powdered it, mm -hmm. you know, to make them more surface area and then do it that way. Okay. So um, that's really great. Did you do wildcraft those yourself? Yeah, from our property. Right, uh -huh. right. So then you probably have lots of plants also there. Yeah. That's really great. Well, when I said powered, I meant because then if she was going to tincture it, I usually do that, you know, just to break it down so there's more surface area. It really just depends on how you want to do it. And if you're going to boil it, of course, that wouldn't work. You're going to boil it the several times prior to. So you, you just have to depend on what method you want to use. Did you get more better because some of the kids have tincture of the Well, you're going to have to process it either way. I guess it depends on how you want to process it. And I really, I personally think that when I used to practice, and I did have a practice in Louisville for a while, and uh, how does the person, you or whomever you're preparing it for, like to taste it? You have to remember that. So am I saying that you can just, you know, throw mushroom on anything and have the same medicinal value? No, because you still have to break that down. But does the person like a tincture? And if you do a tincture, do you want to have that alcohol aftertaste or do you want, you know, glycerin? So it really has to also, your preparation depends on how you will best take that. If you're putting a tincture in your mouth and every time you do it, you're like, oh, I hate it. Sorry, it's not gonna help you as much. It's not. So you have to remember how it's most palatable to you. And you have to get past the fact that maybe, like you were saying, it might taste a little bit rough and really be grateful for what it's doing for you. Um, you know, whether or not you put your tincture in a little bit of water or you can put it directly on your tongue. You really have to experiment with it. You know, plants are living things, you're a living thing. You know, how best are you receiving that? That communication of plant medicine to humans. So that's what it is. You know, it's not, you're not taking a pill that came out of a bottle that was made of a synthetic plant something. Or actually, uh, a plant, I don't mean plant, a, a, a pharmaceutical plant that's made and, and you know, uh, broken down. So we really have to understand how best we like to ingest the plant also. And then it will do us uh, more good. Um, because I'm a firm believer that if you're making dinner and you're in a bad mood, you know what, somebody's not going to like it, somebody's going to get it up their stomach, something's going to happen. So you really need to, to remember that whenever you're making these preparations, it's a multi-level um, uh, relationship that you're going to have. You're not opening a bottle and taking a pill and you're not going to the store and buying something. If you want to, you know, get rid of your sinus infection and you have made that tincture, I promise you that it tastes better and it works faster if you have made that preparation. There's a whole process that happens to us in relationship to the plant. And that's not um, something scary and it's not something supernatural. You know what it's the way it is. I'm showing you right now that we all have energy. They have energy in addition that speaks to the different cells in our body. Take it as you may. In addition to the chemical constituents that are available for the way to be able to. Okay. Um, 
give me some other questions. Anything you prepared, you got questions about? So I, me and my daughters, um, we live against a nature reserve. So we're my property line in nature reserve. Yeah. So I've been using ladies um, for um, menstrual uh -huh. issues, and it's fabulous. But I don't know how to do use it outside of tincture. How do you what? How do you use it outside of tincture? Yeah. The ladies' mantles over here. Ladies' sun, like they're they're they're, they're real cute okay. pink flowers that you get abundance of them yeah. in my late summer early well, fall. What are you using? A tincture? You have a tea? What are you doing? Are you I'm using, using it as a tincture right yeah. now. Yeah. So I guess you could you know if you're using the aerial parts, you could probably use any of that as a tea or infusion. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah, because I well I don't. I'm very new to this. He's he's helping me as okay. much as possible. But like I know it works for menstrual issues. Mm -hmm. But do you know of any other things that it can? Because like I, I don't think that reason. So it's got to have some kind of anti inflammatory Yeah. So I don't. Uh, do you use that a lot? I do. I powderize it. I put it in smoothie blends. So yeah. So okay. Yeah. I'm trying to find other ways. Other to ways. Consume okay. it. But I do love it as a tea and even just as in your salad. Yeah. Well, and with any of the herbal really? plants, like we were saying, I mean, you can make put them in your salad. So whether it's a dandelion, whether it's a violet. I Whether it's, you know, anything that you're picking, the uh, purple den nettle that really just left this. Um, you can always add them to your salad. You can stir fry them. I've done that with even stinging nettle. When you stir fry stinging nettle, you know, of course, harvest it with the gloves on. Then you uh, saute it and it's, it's like, you know, the um, spinach. Really? So, yeah. Huh. So, most of the plants you could saute, you can put in your salad, you can put in your smoothie. You can uh, make a tea out of it. So there are many different uses. Yeah, just keep in mind that, uh, you know, it's usually the ones that are, when you're using the parts that are below gram, then you might need to prepare those differently because they, they don't break down as easily. Mm -hmm. On the speaking nettle, how long can you harvest them? Because right now around us, they're only about this tall and they got the really tender tops on them. Yeah, usually with that, um, it's better like the stinging nettle or fiddleheads. You know things like that like you know when the first which most of those are already out but it's they're going to be more tender but it's going to it's going to be okay either way okay. you know our, and i know that the needles get bigger and everything um it's a little bit more sticky but still harvest those you know carefully and put in your butter your olive oil and saute them in those two and then have lots of vitamin c and uh, e and a and, and many different things yeah and actually stinging nettle is a tonic does anybody have stinging nettle? Does everybody have it? Yeah, a lot of people have it. So stinging nettle, I consider a tonic herb. Um, so I use that in conjunction with other herbs also and um, use that as a base. Um, and stinging nettle is just a beautiful thing. Uh, it's beautiful for everybody, but I work with a lot of women or I'm used to. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's a great woman's ally, we'll just put it that way. Um, for our menstruation, for our periods and things like that. And to, um, to aid and to add as a tonic to keep us balanced, put it that way. Um, there's so many great plants. Pick, if you're new to it, pick one or two. If, you're, if you know what you're doing, pick a half a dozen and really work with them. Make a tea, make an infusion, make a tincture. That's the best way to start. My teacher, one of my teachers used to say, which Rosemary Gladstar, I don't know if anybody knows that name. Um, who's the one that I love? This is my sister here. Who's the one? Susan Weed. She's a fabulous teacher. Her, she in person is such a who. Um, you know, Michael and Collins are all, all kinds of them. And really, the advice that I heard in the beginning is choose one if you don't know anything else. My first plan of choice was yarrow. I named one of my great Pyrenees after it. It's still a beautiful plant and always works for me. Um, so choose a plant. Work with it, make a tea, make a tincture, make a salve, read about it, sit next to it, whatever you want to do to really uh, understand how it works on many levels. Um, you know, I'm sure a lot of people have animals. I have goats, chickens, dogs, cats, myself. And what do we do? We usually, unless we're butchering them, sit, which, you know, is definitely uh, has its place also. We sit with the animal, we, uh, you know, we look at it, we touch it, we, we do all these things, but because plants don't have mouths that we see and they don't have eyes, we don't appreciate the plant the same way you would an animal or a human. And I'm just gonna, personal experience here, it adds another dimension to it. You're hearing, uh, this is, a, I believe it's just a, 
uh, sh sorry, not just, this is a butterweed. Um, I don't use this. I know that it can be used for um, inflammation and different things like that. Um, but I'm not doing this. You know, this is the energy conducted from the plant. So they do have life. They don't have eyes. They don't speak. So just remember, you can spend time with your plants. It's not going to be a hippie and you're not going to be crazy. It's just the way it is. Then when you make your medicine, I don't know. I mean, everybody loves their animals. You love your chickens and then you butcher them. You love your plants and then you pick them. But when you're, you know, when you're clipping that plant, I'll tell you what I do. I go out, I harvest, I clip, and then I, and then I know when to stop. And then I say thank you, just like you would the chicken gave its life to the butcher. So that's how I feel about plants. And that's how I think that whenever you are processing, it makes you feel more connected and it even helps, you know, um, helps the medicine to work better. So that's a little bit of a serial personal view. Um, but on their own, they have beautiful chemical constituents, yes. I am like the music, I'm not but you know I've got a lot of stuff on my land that people walk around. Oh my gosh, Yes. And I threw a couple names out. What, what is it? It's just overwhelming to me to yeah. get started. Yeah. And, and I appreciate the thought of just doing two things and mastering them. You mentioned a couple people that are good teachers. Are these, are oh, um, these are people that I had to go off and study from. Um, but oh, a weed walk, where do you live? Uh, the, uh, north of Salem, about 20 minutes. Oh, well, I'm in board, so maybe okay. I can come out and do a weed walk. Okay. So what, um, yeah, and if you, you know, and I know that Karen actually does that also and go out here for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I wouldn't volunteer you. Awesome. So if you can even find anyone, even if it's a neighbor that you know that knows what yarrow looks like, even if they don't use it for medicine, so that you're properly identifying it. Um, if you want a book, as far as keying out and identifying plants, the most simple and beautiful book is called Botany in a Day. Um, and that's a very easy way to key out a plant. Botany in a day is a book you might want. Find a relative or a, a friend or a neighbor nearby who says, oh, I hate that stinging metal. Just, oh, I want it out of my yard. Oh, really? Show me what it looks like. Or I hate that plantain. I'm, I have to spray it because it grows next to my dandelion. Go out and identify. So if you don't know, there's usually somebody around who hates that weed. And they can tell you what it is, and then you key it out or identify it. But, um, and there's so many great resources online, but I'm on Facebook, Luna. You know, you can send me a picture, not to say that I can identify everything, but there are a lot of things out there. And uh, just start with one or two. Just make sure you got the right plant. You, know, you don't want to uh, take, think it's Yarrow, but really it's Queen Anne's Lace or, or Hemlock. You know, you don't want to get that. And those three sometimes get uh, mixed up, so that's why you said it. Yes. What is your Facebook page? Uh, um, it's just my personal page, Luna Forest. Luna Forest. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. There is a there's a little pad over there that Chase put out, but we all have our phones, so. Um, yeah. And then for the uh, meet and greet in November, I think it is. Um, I'm going to be presenting. It'll be a little bit more detailed. And I think Karen's going to present also, uh, so you can learn, you know, one of us will have, or both of us, preparation classes where maybe we can actually make some things together, and I'll bring some plants, and I'll bring you know, equipment that I use, and she'll bring her so we can just, you know, share it a little bit more with you. But if you have questions, uh, send, shoot me a, a, you know, a message. Um, and I'm not outside all the time, most of the time, but I will get back to it and talk to you and try to help you as best I can. Because really, plant medicine is people medicine. It's our medicine. Even, um, you know, I don't want to get off on a tangent about how society's going and all that. But you know what? For all intents and purposes, everything you need to heal really is in the yard. It really is. You know, my nephew got a hat made because one time we were riding down the road years ago. And I said, look, I said, it's a salad. And it was, it was a vacant lot. But really, it's the salad and it's medicine right there. So keep that in mind. Don't let it be daunting and don't like, oh my gosh, I don't know. Just make sure you've identified the right plant and just go with it. Eat it, saute it, put it in your smoothie, you know, uh, make a tea out of it. Don't be afraid of it. Do not be afraid of it. If anybody wants to come over and uh, look at my little things, you can. When you touch it, you'll see you be different. If you want to, you know, if you have any if you want to hold them, actually, it'll, it'll show me where your energy is, too, because all it does is take the resonant energy. So if you're really, really calm, you're just barely going to get anything. Um, yeah.
turn her up and see what she thinks about you. Um, so, any other? I'm trying to hurry because I know everybody probably wants to eat lunch. Yeah, this is a little more active. Um, any other questions, comments? Got any, any short? I'll be here for a while so we can just talk one on one. Um, but again, if you take anything away and you want to start, find one plant you like. Because plants, unlike pharmaceuticals, who you say, oh, that's just for this, that's just for this. Plants in their whole form have, uh, can help many different maladies. So you're not just gonna say, oh, here's the R1, I'm only taking it for my sinus infection. No, you're gonna find out the different properties that uh, also, that you can use it for many different things. So even if you just work with one, it doesn't mean you can only help one thing. So, um, yeah, and I want everybody to be excited about it. It's exciting to know you can walk out in your yard, you can feed yourself, you can heal yourself. It's very important, very important to try to stand there. So, and to make use of it. Do you know who anybody is like worried classes? Well, where are you? Shelby County, Indiana. Okay, I don't know how far it is. I mean, I can come out and do that. I'm in board. So that's what, Washington County? Yeah, that's an hour. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you had a group, yeah, if you had a group together, would you ever would you get them to you and walk through the woods or? We could. I have a lot of woods, or usually I'll usually like to go to the people's houses where they live, and then I can point out so things that you can. Yeah. So springtime is best. Um, there's a lot of good things coming up. You know, spring, fall. Um, fall is good too, but summer. So yeah. We could do that. You know, and even if you're identifying two or three things that you can use on a regular basis, start storing it. Um, then that's, that's all so. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming and for listening. Thank you. If you have any other questions, I'm here. Okay. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed her class. I thought it was phenomenal. If you need to get in touch with her or have any follow-up questions of her, please reach out to us, chasingdreamshomestead at gmail.com, and we will get you in touch with her. Um, it was really cool to see all the interaction and the questions she was getting during her demonstration. We appreciate interactive audiences, and I'm sure she did as well. If you like what we're doing, like and subscribe to our page, and follow our Facebook group, Chasing Dreams Homestead, on Facebook as well. As always, y'all, Till next time, keep dreaming.